Hello, Monetization Nation. I'm Nathan Gwilliam, your host, and welcome back to another episode with Zach Condry. Zach is the president of Everest Communications. In the last episode, we discussed the importance of a crisis management system. And today, we're going to discuss how we can rebuild a reputation if it's damaged. We'll cover the following key takeaways. Number one, those who love us already are much more likely to forgive us and defend us than those who don't. Number two, before we make a statement of apology, we should look at the data. Number three, our website is not our front door. Google is. Number four, in order to get rid of negative search results, one of the effective strategies is to bury them with positive results. Number five, an ounce of prevention can be better than a pound of cure. Okay, so let's say our reputation has been damaged. What do we do then? So it's all contextual. All of it is contextual. Um, let me lay some groundwork and then, and then we'll get into the reputational repair. It's what industry they're in. A really big thing for digital crisis is brand loyalty and, and um, brand love. It is incredibly beneficial for an organization to build up that brand love, brand loyalty, before the crisis so that you can have people that come to your defense because that definitely blunts that uh, that trauma and helps you come out of the uh, the, the crisis uh, better for it okay so let's so all it's all contextual right I've had companies that have dealt with stuff that uh, they're just roundly hated and then I've had other companies you know who produce very popular TV shows that for instance I, I had a, a company we've all heard of that produced a very popular TV show that a hacker was threatening to release early release the the shows and we were so prepared of like customer backlash backlash of the stars all this sort of stuff and it turned out that everybody just wanted to watch the show and eat their popcorn at 10 p.m. on Sundays they didn't want the show leaked because they loved the 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 media company and they loved the show so much that they actually fought back and that totally changed the ball game so you're talking about coming out of a crisis. The first thing to talk about when coming out of a crisis is search and Google, because if it is a true crisis, there's going to be news articles about it. There's going to be you know negativity online, your blog entries, what have you. So your negativity sort of baseline is raised just immediately. And so you're just starting from here. And so we must consider search. Social is important, but social is kind of transient, uh, dynamic, you know, engagement specific. However, you have something like Wikipedia, Search, Reddit to a lesser extent, um, Glassdoor, Yelp, all of these things that kind of stick around. Those are the ones we need to manage first and foremost. And how do we manage those? You talk about managing Yelp and Google reviews and such, um, responding to those negative reviews and, and helping our the customers that love us post more positive reviews. Like what, what ideas do you, do you have for us for specifically implementing that? Yeah. Let, let me talk about search first, because that's kind of the, the real biggie. Um, because, it, you know, your website is not how customers receive you. It's not your front door. It's Google. People don't type in target.com. They just type in target into, um, into Chrome or what have you and whatever pops up, pops up. So let's talk about search first. I want to be very clear about this because I get to ask this all the time. Individuals or organizations cannot remove negative search results. The only thing you can do is put additional positivity into the environment, whether that's positive news articles, whether that's um, trade association related things. I, I don't care. I mean, there's a million different ways to go about it, and it really depends on the situation. But you just need to put more into the environment, more positivity, which will then hopefully over time suppress that negativity but you can't i've had i've been on the phone with lawyers where they'll say i'm going to sue google because of this or ceos that say can't you just call up google and tell them this is wrong no the answer is no the only thing you can do to fix google search results is to put positivity into the environment positivity and more that's right get enough good stuff that the it pushes down the bad stuff it's like when a room is dark you can't just turn off the darkness, right? You, the only way to solve that is you've got to fill it with light. So you've got to 
get enough good positive stuff out there about you. And honestly, it's okay because people aren't expecting 100% positive reviews of a company. When you look at an Amazon book and they're all 100% positive reviews, you think the company bought them all, right? You you need some negative in there to to give you authenticity and credibility. Um, but you've you got to have an overwhelming number of positive reviews to counteract the negative. My role, typically speaking, it's dealing with the negative search results, but it's really about how the executives feel about the negative search results. Because they've built this thing, they've worked, you know, sometimes decades on a business, and then they see Google and it's all negative. And it's it's really quite depressing and emotional and passionate and Again, it's my responsibility to go and look at the search data and say, okay, so these things are movable. Uh, here's how we think you should move them, and here's how long it's going to take. But it takes patience and and really a high pain tolerance, to be honest. You're suggesting living with it, right? Being being okay that there are some negative things out there. We've had great success um, doing exactly what we're talking about doing, but it's quite difficult, and it takes a very long time. I mean, it's not going to get fixed in a month or two. I mean, you're talking six months to two years. So I know you can't give specific names of companies that you've worked with probably because of, of non-disclosures, but can you, can you, without naming names, can you share with us some stories of some problems companies have faced, uh, what you did to fix it, and maybe the outcome as a result? Um. Sure, I'm happy to give any. Um, I mean, you could literally name just about any industry and or uh, or issue, and and I could probably give you a fun story. Well, let me let me give you one, and then we can maybe go on, put, on this tangent. I just think it's kind of fun, um, and it's 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 pretty beneficial. And I've actually been doing more of these trainings. So, um, right, let me try to be guarded here. Um, there was a there was a professional sports organization. Uh, an individual or a couple of individuals that worked for this sports organization had a number of um, inappropriate videos and photos released online. Very uh, global, huge, I mean, probably hundreds of millions of, of, of fans globally who know these individuals. And, um, and the, the owner and founder of this, this organization said, we were working with them on a, on a, a crisis playbook at the time. And, uh, and the owner and founder of the organization said, I am so sick of this. Get somebody in here to train the, 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 the athletes, roughly 200 athletes um, at this organization across kind of different brands. And, um, and so that's what we did. So we went around um, to the different locations where the, where the athletes were, and we trained them on social media hygiene and, um, and protection. So it was kind of a two-pong process of like, hey, um, any DM that you send, any photo, any uh, any video, anything that leaves your phone is no longer your own. Talk about societal issues. I mean, you know, if you're, you know, talking with your high school buddy after, you know, after a couple drinks or something, you're going to speak differently than you do to your board of directors. Um, and if that kind of thing gets leaked out, it's it's trouble. And so we we went around and did, did all these trainings and, and it was it was actually quite beneficial and uh, the company hasn't had any issues since I think we first started doing it in um, I think 2017 2018 and um, and we've now switched to an online program I don't travel as much thanks to the pandemic um, but we do um, online programs for them on, on exactly these issues so this is the quote of an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure right just Let's deal with it in advance instead of always having to play catch up to fix the problems that happen. Yeah, the examples we would give, we wouldn't give any industry, any uh, specific sport examples. We would go outside and we would give examples of, for instance, there was a, a offensive tackle at um, at Ole Miss named Laramie Tunsil, who was going to be, I mean, he was going to be one of the top draft draft picks. I think it was 2016, and. Um, like 30 minutes before the draft, a video of him smoking marijuana through a gas mask was leaked online. 30 minutes before the draft. And supposedly he dropped like 14 spots. Oh my goodness. And um, and this is all from memory, by the way. It might be a little fuzzy, but it was significant. To the point where Forbes said he potentially lost $8 million because of that video. And so when I said, 
but I showed I actually showed the video of him smoking marijuana. I you know talked about the whole thing, and then I showed Forbes eight million dollars. It was a gasp in the whole room because that's real money. Can you give an example of a of a company that had a problem or? Or did training and prevented a problem? Well, I'm thinking of one particular client that I can't name. Um, but, you know, we talk about the Me Too and we talk about the um, kind of gotcha type stuff. He was at a conference and um, just a regular, he was a, he's a founder of an investment firm, very popular, well-known investment firm. And he says, um, he's at this conference and he's, he's, I don't know if he's a keynote, but he was a speaker. And he was comparing uh, investing on kind of how to pick up a woman at a bar or something, you know, doing preparation at a time um, would have been helpful. Um, but also that reputational repair is just as critical um, working with these high profile individuals. So what advance work would you have recommended for him? And then what, what repair work should have been done or, or was done and, and what was the result? Did, was it able to be fixed? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't really want to get into kind of the repair work and stuff, but um, ahead of time, I mean, you can't really plan for these sorts of things. You can only plan for what has already happened. Um, and somebody secretly recording at a conference can't be planned for, but it now can, if that makes sense. Um, so you just take past scenarios and try to apply them uh, to your company and or, or your, you know, your, your management. And um, you train your team to not talk like that at conferences, right? Okay. And not talking about him specifically, but when that hit, if, if you had a customer that was in that situation, what would you recommend that they do after that hits? Um, look at the data. So see um, what the, what the conversation looks like. What we're really looking for is volume, velocity, and sentiment. So we're looking for volume of conversation the trajectory, like how quickly it's going up or going down, and then overall sentiment. Data analytics programs will help you with the volume and the velocity. Sentiment, not so much. You have to do that manually. But those are our three main markers of whether an issue is dying down or not. So if you're that individual, just watch it and then pick your opportunity to come back into the environment, maybe apologize, maybe, I, who knows? It's all dependent upon the situation industry, but look at the data first and foremost. Because if you go in guns blazing before it's died down, you probably are going to make it worse. Can you share with me one more story of, of somebody that went through a crisis situation without naming them specifically? This one I can actually name. Um, and I think most people have heard of this one. So um, I was uh, a digital advisor um, for the Malaysian Airlines disappearance. What a lot of people don't know is that the uh, Malaysian Airlines is actually owned by the Malaysian government and, or the Malaysian Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is then owned by the Malaysian government. And, um, and it was the, the, particularly the digital response um, was um, not good, let's put it that way, to the, uh, to the issue. And so we got called in. It had hap It had already happened, and we got called in like two or three days later of like help them, you know, help us clean it up. And um, and so th that's what we did. We helped them kind of triage the situation, um, understand like who was talking about it. I mean, everybody was talking about it, but kind of honing in on influencers, honing in on kind of uh, things we were seeing, different geographies, um, all of that kind of stuff. And, and typically for an event-driven crisis like this, what we'd like to do is, um, is build a, like a website or a, or a page off of the company website to provide more information um, to, uh, to stakeholders. So you can control the messaging instead of somebody else controlling the messaging. Because someone is going to uh, uh, put a narrative together. It should be you. Um, you know, because if somebody else is doing it for you, it's going to probably going to include rumors, misinformation, whatever their slant is. I, I wouldn't over communicate, but definitely provide, particularly with these event driven things, provide more, um, uh, more context and kind of, uh, authentic truth behind it. So the learning from that actually, so we, we helped them put together this, this microsite, um, you know, for, for fa frankly, for families and for media members. And it looked great, was totally fine. I'd go to bed and then wake up and it's all gray. 
The whole website was gray. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? You know, we wanted there to be kind of a little bit of vibrancy to it of, you know, some passion of, hey, the the, the airline cares. The airline, you know, uh, we're in this together type of thing. And then it's all gray. And I was like, why in the the world did they turn it gray? And come to find out that um, uh, in Malaysia and, uh, and, and the Middle East, which I'll get into here in a second, a lot of different countries, gray is a sign of mourning. So if you ever see um, it, this happened with the Air Egypt cl- uh, crash as well. Their site for the for the crash, totally gray. Um, so if you ever see something like that from a big multinational company, it's it's they're probably based in that part of the world. Um, now I kind of had an issue with it because the audiences weren't just based in Malaysia or China or, or wherever. It was it was a it was a big global issue. Um, ultimately, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> it stayed gray. The website didn't stay up for that long, but um, uh, it did stay gray. But it was a it was a real learning for me of like when you have these global issues, um, people are going to contextualize it. The the communicators kind of dealing with it on the ground are going to contextualize it in the manner in which they know. Thank you so much, Zach, for sharing your stories and insights with us today. To learn more about or connect with Zach, you can find him on LinkedIn or Facebook or check out his website at everestcoms.com. And there's links to each of these sites in the blog post for this episode on our website. You can also get a free copy of my ebook, Passion Marketing, and learn how you can become a top priority of your ideal customers at passionmarketing.com. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode, and I wish you success at rebuilding your company's reputation if that ever becomes something you need to do. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it. 